Hello and welcome to Mumford High School football field. I'm Jason Palmer alongside Brandon Steele for our third game of the evening. The Mumford Lions will take on the Pell City Panthers and we'll have two quarters of play and then the JV will play one quarter of play between the two teams. Mumford and Montevallo were, had the first game and then Pell City and Montevallo just finished up playing so we're ready to get things started here in this next game. Justin Sistrunk, Pernell Mitchell, number 14, Lance Smith, and 77. We got any problems going to come to y'all. You take care of it for me, okay? Pell City, you're the visiting team. You're going to call an air. The Eagles going to be head. Air Force symbol is going to be tails. Right. What's your choice? Tails. He called tails. Tails it is. You, you want to receive? Which goal you want to defend? It don't matter. Really. All right, go over there. Y'all come over here. Remember, you got to go on the other side, Stutter. All right, guys, shake in. Good luck.
Encroachment. Result play, first down. Here for a change, this feels like college football time on a Saturday night. They playing like college. Here's a snap to give. Wow. Up the middle, nice tough running up Jeez. through the heart of the Lions defense, and he'll get all the way down to the 15-yard line for a first down. Great block on the offensive front by number 74, Will Pittman. He's a junior, opening up a nice hole for his running back, number 22, uh, Darius Garrett, our team captain. 8.51 to go. Here's another give to Garrett. He tries to go up the middle. Again, not as successful as the previous run. Able to pick up a couple yards there. 17 Toyer, the hitman, Pernell Mitchell, and Rodney Gross in there as well. Pell City mixing it up a little bit. Run, pass, pass, run, and uh, keeping Mumford off balance and making a nice little push down here inside the Mumford territory. Those two guys, Pernell and Rodney Gross, already with offers from JSU. Two receivers to the left, single to the right. Here's Gossett rolling out. He's got his man out there. Pass is caught, but he's brought down good coverage that time by the Lions. As quickly getting there was Ethan Swinford and also Purnell coming over from the linebacker position to help assist on the play. Yeah, Gossett to McCombs. Found him out, open out, out there in the flat. Not really much on the game. We'll call it third down and about four to go, Jason. McClendon will check out. On that defensive front, Pell City needing five yards to get a first down, nine to score. Gossip, hand off to Gilbert, and he'll pick up maybe one yard as the clock winding down under 7.30 here. Not much happening there. Mumford hanging tough right there on the defensive front. Darius Garrett there with about a yard on the carry. We'll call it fourth down and about three to go. From the eight. Pell City with plenty of time here, but need to pick up either the first down or do they take a shot in the end zone? We'll see what Coach Wayne Lee and Gossip will, Gossett will call here for Pell City. Crucial down here for the Panthers, and they're taking a little bit extra time as the play clock rolls under 10 seconds, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't call a timeout here, Brandon, to try to talk things over and see what they want to do. They're going to have to. They're going to take the penalty. Play clock winds down to zero, and now they're starting to play clock again. The official winds it. I don't understand what just happened there. I mean, they basically, <laughs> they've got 40 seconds already for a play clock. Good grief. Here's Gossett in the gun, and now the play is going to be blown dead, and Pell City will take a timeout. So strange series of events there here as we get close to the goal line. We'll take a quick break here on the spring football series on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Banking local matters. When you keep your money here, it stays in the community to support local businesses and schools and farms. At First Bank of Alabama, we've been serving this area for more than 160 years. We care about our community and the people who live here. So when you bank here, you make being here better for all of us. First Bank of Alabama, the official bank of here. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. We're back here at Mumford Football Field. Jason Palm and Brandon Steele. I'd like to mention our quarter sponsor here, Griffin Laser Engraving, customized Yeti cups. That's what they specialize in down at Griffin Laser Engraving. If you like Yeti, you need to go find Griffin Laser Engraving, and they will hook you up. Here is Gossip at fourth and three from the eight. Need a big play here. They're going for the end zone fake throw. And he does throw it, though. Fake me out. Pass is complete. 
And number seven, Connor McCombs there, the junior, right there in the end zone. Great play by Gossett. Just, yes. Uh, you see it here on the instant replay. Good play call by the coaches during that timeout as Gossett. Back in shotgun. Sees Quick McCombs throw. all the way. Yeah, he's right there, right where he's supposed to be, only where he can catch it. Great coverage by Mumford, but not before McCombs can pick up the the touchdown. Yeah, McCombs there with a nice grab. Really quick throw there. And now Pell City will go for the extra point. Not much you can do there if you're Mumford on that kind of play. You know, that's just a good hookup. Up. And it's good, and you're right. Uh, perfect play as he got to the goal line and completed pass for a touchdown. Let's take a quick break and be right back here on FNN, the Friday Night Network. I'm Craig Lipscomb, and I was raised right here in District 30. Angela and I are raising our children here with the same conservative Christian values that we were raised with. I love this area, but we have a lot that we can improve on. Our roads and bridges need real work. I want to go to Montgomery to advocate for better infrastructure. I want to recruit companies with high-paying jobs to Etowah and St. Clair counties. I want to help keep this the kind of place where our children will want to come back to raise their children. I'm Craig Lipscomb, and I'm asking for your vote for the Alabama House of Representatives on June 5th. Back in action here at Mumford Football Stadium. Zay Brett in at quarterback for the Lions. Pass is complete. Gains about six yards on the play. Coming up with the reception there. Number nine, LJ King Flint with the reception. So Zay Brett will get the start back at quarterback for the Lions. Back in the backfield behind him, Justin Sistrunk. Two receivers to our left, two to the right to give to Sistrunk. He'll go to the left side. Almost brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Breaks two tackles. Nice run there by Sistrunk, picking up the first down and then some. And you saw what he can do there in that first game and really did a good job eluding that tackle in the backfield. Yeah, Cody Eads for Pell City was able to bring him down, but not before Sistrunk picks up a first down. Mumford. Britt. In the gun, Sistrunk will line up to his right. Fake give to him. Brett will go up the middle and pick up a few yards there. Down to about the 44-yard line is Brett. Anthony Emmerich, the senior, number 28, making the stop there. At, uh, Mumford picks up about three or four yards on the play, so we'll call it second down and about six to go. An offensive line, Trayvon McClendon. Carson McGuire, Peyton Graben at center, 58. For the Lions, his number is Logan Turner on that line. Got uh, three receivers to the right, single to the left, and now Sistrunk will come over and line up on the left side as well. Brett all alone in the gun. Fake give to Swiffer coming in motion, and Brett will pick up a couple yards there on second down. He'll bring up third and about three for the Lions. Yeah, picked him up a couple of yards. Cody Eads, number one, again, the senior, uh, able to push him down. Third, da third down, and we'll call it about a long three to go. 4.55 to go. Pell City took the early lead off a nice drive by the Panthers. Quick pass to the end zone for the Panthers for the score. Well, Eight-yard pass, and now the Lions looking to answer. Here's a quick pass out to Rashad Russell, number 11, and he'll go across the 50-yard line and be close to the first down. And I think they're going to – is it going to be short or they're going to give it to him? One side looks a little short, and our side here, the near side, looks like it's right there on the money. They may call for a measurement here. First down. First down, Lions. Rashad Russell got enough forward – Number three, Clay Hardy just wasn't there quick enough, but uh, Mumford picks up the first down, keeps the sticks rolling. A little messy play there. I think that was a false start by Mumford. And we'll see here. I'm not for sure if the official waved the play in because the chains. No flag. Yeah, no flag. The chains weren't set yet, and they already snapped the ball, and now the official will bring the play in, and the Lions will get set. Two receivers to the left and two to the right. Britt back in the gun, looking to throw. Good blocking out front, but it collapses on him, and he'll be brought down for a huge loss. Number There's 49. Making a stop for number 49 for the Panthers. Clayton Rich, Jr., and number 56 was in there. Avery Weiss. And he comes up and 
Does a little talking in the face of Britton. There it is on the instant replay. As you see, he had nowhere to go. The coverage just broke down around him. You, know, you see big number 49, Clayton Rich, showing some muscle. Flexing a little bit. It is second down, and Big Daddy's barbecue to go. Trayvon McClendon took a little bit of exception to that, and he's matched up in front of 49. Now here's a, the give to Sistron. Going around that left side, hard running. Brought down by about three, maybe four tacklers. There for the Panthers. Number 28, Anthony Emmerich, the senior there first on the carry. Still third down and long. Not much on the game for Mumford, so we'll call it third down and about, oh, we'll call about 17 yards. 3.37 to go, and unlike the previous two games, we will play two varsity quarters here. So the Lions don't have to be in too big a hurry here, but uh, need to pick up the first down here. Going to the air, tuck to Ethan Swinford, and it'll slip down at about the 45-yard line. Had some grass in front of him, but lost his footing. Changed the quarterback. They moved Britt out to the inside slot there, receiver. Brought Tuck in, and uh, Swinford just lost his footing there. Yeah, fourth and 19, just lost his footing on that play. I'm not so sure he would have got too much on the play. It was a slew of uh, Pale City Panthers right there coming on him. Looks like we got a timeout. We'll take one as well here on the spring football series on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Attorney General may be the job title, but protecting Alabama's families, keeping our neighborhoods and our children safe, that's always been my job, my mission. That's who I am. I've worked with law enforcement and stood with the victims of crime. And instead of just talking about it, I've actually convicted the corrupt. And I've gone to countless parole hearings to keep violent criminals behind bars. Nobody's got more experience, and no one's better prepared to be Alabama's Attorney General. Back at Mumford Football Stadium, first and 10 for the Panthers now as they take over on downs, 2.19 to go, leading 6 7 to nothing, rather. Toyer with pressure on gossip, floats a pass out in the flat, and the pass goes incomplete. Damon Casey on the coverage as number 11. Cordell O'Neill. Yes. Trying to make the grab, but uh, just overthrew him. Second down and 10. Give us a second to talk about our spring football series presented by First Bank of Alabama with locations throughout the region, including Talladega, Lincoln, Mumford, Weedowie, Woodland, Ashland, and Roanoke. Get out to First Bank Alabama today. Three receivers to the right, single to the left, single back in the backfield. That's Garrett for the Panthers. Gossett back in the gun. The Lions. Looking for a stop here on second down. Here's a quick pass out. Fumbles the ball, loses control of it, and drops it. Had it right in his hands, right where he wanted. Yeah, Connor McCombs. Just come up with it. Yeah, Connor McCombs hit him right there in the hands. Uh, actually had possession of it for a couple of seconds, and it just kind of bobbled it out of bounds. Third down and 10 for Pell City. FNN foot, high school football game of the week returns this fall. We have Thursday and Friday double headers. Starting on August 23rd and 24th, stay tuned for the announcement of who those games will be. Here's Gossip rolling to the left. Got a little running room, and now he's got time to throw it. Great job breaking up the pass there. And <laughs> Hell City won the flag. <laughs> They're not going to get it, but uh, that, we'll look at that on the instant replay. <laughs> Kyle Ross with the pass breakup over there. And we mentioned him before, Kyle Ross. There's Gossip the, kind of throwing it down, kind of a, a desperate throw. You can see a good job by our cameraman there. Well, yeah, it's close. You know, if it's close, leave it alone. But, yeah, that was definitely passing interference. There. Timeout called by Pell City. We'll take one as well. Spring football series. We'll come back here shortly on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get it now at 855-CABLE-1. We're back here at Mumford Football Stadium. Jason Palmer and Brandon Steele here with you. Pell City with a 7-0 lead. And now Mumford will take over on offense. 
Balls at the 45 yard line. Here's the give to Sistrunk. Started to go up the middle, wow. cut back to left, and it's brought down. Big tackle there. A Brett Staples, great heads up play by Brett Staples, getting Sistrunk in the backfield. Second down and long. Staples was coming, and Sistrunk planted and tried to cut back to the left, and he was brought down quickly. Graben will snap the ball here. Here's Tuck in at quarterback for the Lions. Quick pass, and a pass is incomplete. He's and kind of missed his mark there. Hit him in the hands, but just unable to hold on to it. Third down and 11 for Mumford. Mumford looking a little sloppy on this series there, yeah, Jason. That was Zay Brett the pass is intended for, and he just couldn't get a handle on it. Tanner Reeves, the senior quarterback from last year, working the ball boy for the Mumford Lions, trying to help out any way he can. Tremendous young man will continue his playing career at Huntington University. Here's the Lions on third and 11 from the 44. Tuck rolling back, fires a pass out to the right side, a little bit of miscommunication there well, as the pass goes the incomplete. There, yeah, the, uh, both. Receivers were headed downfield. Hear a few slams over in the next booth. So I think that was just a misread by Montford. Yep. Uh, fourth down. So we'll see what they elect to do. It looks like the defense is coming back on the field. This this Lions coaching staff, tremendous coaching staff. Uh, been together now. This is their fourth year. Head coach Bill Smith, defensive coordinator Chandler Tyree, offensive coordinator Coach Darrell LeBeau, offensive line coach Coach Darrell Smith. Linebackers Leonard Davis and the secondary coach Charles Graves, just a tremendous coaching staff, and you know lost a lot of players from last year, went nine and two, and are kind of getting these guys uh, better here during the spring football practice, and they will be. They'll be better by the summer, and they'll get that communication stuff worked out. I'm sure Tuck, a, a young quarterback coming in, and uh, uh, just a little bit of miscommunication there. Pell City now with another opportunity on offense. Single receiver to the left. And the give is to Garrett, and he's slung down immediately. Nice play there by Pernell Mitchell, the hit man. <laughs> Coming in on the stop. Yeah, nice, nice job by Pernell there, getting Garrett in the backfield, second down, and we'll call it about a long 10 to go for Pell City. Tom on Johnson will check in for the Lions. Number 71, Cyrus Powell will check out. Second and 10 from the 26 as the clock winds under. 50 seconds here to go in this quarter. Single back in the backfields. Garrett Gossett in the gun. Looking to throw. Rolls out to his right. Heavy pressure from behind, and he'll go down. The Lions come up with a sack there. Ontarius Toyer. And we'll see who came in from behind there. There's Gossett and shotgun, like you said. Here comes uh, Montford. Didn't see him coming. The pocket collapsed around him. And he should do. That's a learning example right there. You need to get rid of the football. That was Jacoby Threat, number 55. His older brother, Jeffrey Threat, was a force on this Montford Lions team, both offensively and defensively. And uh, he just graduated. Now his younger brother wearing his number, taking his place. And, boy, they're, they're very similar. And that's how the quarter will end. With Pell City leading seven to nothing, we'll have one more quarter of RC play. We'll take a quick break and be right back here on the spring football series on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Less taxes means more money in your pocket and more money for businesses to grow. I'm Dale Marsh. That's why I offered the largest tax cut Alabama has seen in a decade. Plus, we dramatically reduced state government to save taxpayers another hundred million dollars a year. Conservative Del Marsh, cutting taxes, reducing government, expanding businesses. I'm Del Marsh. It's not rocket science. Reduce government, lower taxes, grow jobs. Del Marsh for Alabama. Big Daddy's Barbecue on Highway 21 is where Munford comes to eat. 
you'll always find delicious home cooking daily with fast, friendly service. Big Daddy's offers plates or sandwiches with all your favorite sides to choose from, specializing in wings, burgers, chicken, ribs, and barbecue. Open early, open late, six days a week. Come in with family or friends or call ahead and take it home. 256-358-9005. Big Daddy's Barbecue, proud supporters of the Munford Lions. We're back here at Munford Football Stadium. Pell City on third and 17 from the 20. Got a new quarter, fresh quarter to play with. Here's Gossip, high snap, able to cry it. Rolls around to the right, and the play will stop. We'll see what the whistle will be here. Did they get the play blown in, or they reset the clock, okay? Reset the clock, and I guess they're going to start things over here, so. Yeah, we got a third and about uh, first bank of Talladega to go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Two receivers to right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield. Here's Pell City. Gross looking to come on the blitz. And here he comes from behind. Gossett's got to get rid of it, and he does. And a pass will go incomplete. Rodney Grouse there on the chasing Gossett down and able to hurry up the throw. Now we got fourth down and long. See what Pell City does here. On fourth down. Mumford looking good on this series. And Pell City looks to turn oh. it over on downs to the Lions. That'll give us a chance to talk about First Bank of yes. Alabama. Now they offer Casasa, a new way to bank with an account that pays you for doing things you already do, like using your debit card, managing your account with internet banking, and taking advantage of the convenience of e-statement delivery. What do you get? You get great perks like high interest or cash back on your debit card purchases, plus nationwide ATM fee refunds up to $25 per month. Want to know more? Visit First Bank of Alabama online at firstbankal.com today. Muffer will take over on downs. They'll start at the 50, 11.38 to go. Here's Warren Bread in motion. And in around left end. Whoa. Zay Bread and a little bit too much there as yeah, the flags come flag, flying yeah. in. A little bit too much there, Brandon. Yeah, Cody Eads, number one, the senior, just a little too aggressive. Uh, he was well out of bounds. I'm sure we'll show that here on the instant replay, and that draws the flag from Kenneth Breeding, a senior official down there, the white hat on top of it. So we got a dead ball. Dead ball. Let's go. Let's go. Dead ball, personal foul called against Pell City, so that'll be an automatic first down for the Lions. That was Zay Brett at quarterback for the Lions, and... Just getting aggressive on yeah. the play there, Jason. Yeah, I, don't I don't think, think he knew where he, he, he yeah, didn't know he's out of bounds. intentional there. Yeah. It just, you know, it's early, and these guys have been wanting to hit somebody for a while now and play a game. So we'll move the ball downfield here. It'll be on the 35-yard line. where they'll mark it. So the line's going to get an excellent field. I know nobody likes here. to see flags, but you got to call that one. I yes, mean, that's just no doubt. Uh, you don't no want to get anybody doubt. hurt. Trips to the right, single to the left, single back in the backfield, line up behind. Bread is sis drunk. The give to sis drunk. Go to the left side. One gets by one defender, and now there's some more pushing <laughs> late out of bounds. They were letting go holding them hands Woo. up. That was number 34 for Pell City, Collier Slovinski. He's the senior. He let go real quick. Hey, I ain't doing nothing. Sis drunk, big body to bring down. 6'2, 200 pounds. I don't Plays know. both ways for the Lions. Don't know Outside what. linebacker and now running back. Yeah. Don't know why he went into that Gatorade bucket, Coach. <laughs> yeah. He just did. Warren Britt will line up to our near sideline here. Two receivers to the right. Britt tries to go right, goes back left. Tries to stiff arm a guy and gets slung out of bounds at about the 20-yard line, 30-yard line, rather. Yeah, number 28, Anthony Merrick, a senior as well for Pell City, slinging him out of bounds. Clock is stopped at 11:14. Bring up third and five from the 30. Pell City with the lead, seven to nothing. This is kind of sad. This is our last spring football. Yeah, quarter. yeah. I got a long way to go. Like, well, we got one more quarter, JV. So it's not 
Jump the gun. But you've caught a lot of football in the last two weeks. Here's Cistron going around to the right side, and Pell City snuffs that one out again. Two tacklers over there for the Panthers. And the Lions will be held short of the first down, and we'll see if they turn it over on downs to the Panthers. Both teams looking really good, Jason. Uh, defensively, both teams are moving the ball offensively. Pell City did get a score, but, hey, you know, uh, they're playing some good football tonight. The Lions are let to go for it here on fourth down. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Here's Britt in the quarterback. They're going to try to – looks like they tried to draw him off sides there. I wouldn't be surprised if they try that one more time before they get the playoff. And now Coach Smith wants to call a timeout and try to draw him off sides there. Didn't work. And so Coach Smith takes a timeout. We'll take one as well. You're on Spring Football Series on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Banking local matters. When you keep your money here, it stays in the community to support local businesses and schools and farms. At First Bank of Alabama, we've been serving this area for more than 160 years. We care about our community and the people who live here. So when you bank here, you make being here better for all of us. First Bank of Alabama, the official bank of here. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Fourth and five from the 30. Here's Britt rolling back in shotgun, looking for running room. Now got to throw it. Let's it go. Man alone in the end zone. And the pass will go incomplete. Say, Britt done all he could do to get the pass off. Was able to get it off, but just uh, fell short of the intended receiver, number 10, Ethan Swinford. Yes, yeah, Swinford and Bryant Freeman down there in the end zone just kind of underthrew his receiver. Uh, so we're looking down, what is that? Looks like it's going to be first and 10. Yeah, it'll be first and 10 for the Pell City. He'll turn it over on downs. That was fourth down there. We'd like to mention our quarter sponsor, Big Daddy's Barbecue. I tell you what, they're going to be open late tonight. Probably have some music down there. You never know when you go down to Big Daddy's on a Friday and Saturday night. They've either got a, a, a drive-in going on. Uh, uh, they have a lot of antique cars come sometimes. They even had a four-by-four. Uh, drive in one one night uh, to have Jonathan East down there playing some nights. So they got a lot of a lot of things going on in Big Daddy's. Not just the food, but the atmosphere as well. You can go down there and have a good meal. Find something that you like on the menu because their menu is. I'm going to ask huge. for a Jason Burger. You yeah, said no, they got no, a burger. it's not the Jason. They won't know what you're talking about. What is it? Then? It's got to be the Big Dog Burger. Big Dog Burger. They'll know what you're talking about if you go in and ask for the Big Dog I'm Burger. I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go get a Big Dog Burger from Big Daddy's I, Barbecue. I rewrote the menu. All right. Seven to nothing, Pell City. Now they'll have another opportunity here as they take over on downs on the 30. Here's Gossett to give to Garrett. He'll go up the middle, pick up about a yard, maybe two. On the play before he's brought down there. Rodney Gross coming in, making the stop for the Lions. Also, Toyer in on the play. Yeah, Garrett trying to pick up what he can. You know, the game, they say one in the trenches, but I tell you what, watching them here real closely on the binoculars, they're just kind of standing each other up. Neither one of them's really giving a lot. Two receivers to right, single to, or the left rather, single to the right. Give to Garrett. He'll go back up the middle. And he's upended on the play. Once again, Rodney Gross on the stop. And he's getting great penetration there every time. We've called his name out a bunch here this afternoon. Got the offer from JSU, and there should be several more to come as the junior to be next year. Bright future ahead. I told you, he's probably the most athletic, most talented player on the field. It's just, can he play? Can he do the things that the coach is asking him to do? If so, Definitely can be a talent at the next level. Garrett up the middle once again, and he's got the first down and maybe another yard. Lance Smith on the stop as well as Gross. Good block by number 74 for Pell City. Opened up a nice hole for Garrett, and that is uh, Will Pittman, the junior for Pell City. Giving Pell City the first down. 
some big guys up there up front for Pell City. And if you're Coach Wayne Lee coming in to a new team, that's what you like to see because everything starts up front and they've got a good group to work with and could make some noise in, the, in that region. Here's Gossip to give coming up from a linebacker spot there flashing was Rodney Gross slowed him down a little bit and cleaning up the play as a hitman. Pernell Mitchell as well as Lance Smith and Ontarius Toyer helping with the stop. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that just looked like a big train collision down there, Jason. Yeah. Uh, it really did. Uh, everybody was on everybody. Uh, no gain on the play. Second down and 10 for Pell City. Deuces to the right and left. Single back in the backfield alongside Gossett. 7.51 to go in this quarter matchup here. Varsities for Pell City and Mumford. Here's the snap. Gossett, pass, flies out. Pass is incomplete. Damon Casey on the coverage for the Lions. Intended for number 11, wasn't it? There? Cordell O'Neill, the senior, yep. just off his fingertips. Great job by Mumford getting in there. And you know, O'Neill looks the part. He looks uh, the Strong body, tall receiver. They, they need to get the ball to him to be successful in the passing game. But uh, good coverage there by Casey. There's our 2018 high school football season preview show. Going to be at Struts, the coaches show. It begins on Tuesday, August the 14th at 7 p.m. Got to get out there. That is a great time for hot wings and good interviews and give the player of the week. Here's Gossip on the snap. He's going to try to tuck it and run, and that could be dangerous. But he made a couple yards. Yeah, he picked about four on the play, fourth down. Sis drunk on the stop. If I go to that preview show, do you think Jim would uh, front me some wings and a couple big glasses of sweet tea over there? He might. He's got a lot of pool down there in Struts. Well, they do have some good wings. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just got word he said count on it, so I'm going I'm to hold him to that. I tell you why that's a good time out there at Struts. You know, that's a we get a lot of compliments on that from uh, our viewers, and they enjoy coming out there and seeing their kids out there on the coaches' show. And yes. uh, the head coaches come out there, and we get to interview them and talk about the the games we had and the games coming up. It's just a great opportunity. We'll take a quick break here on the Spring Football Series, and be right back here shortly on the FNN the Friday Night Network. Mayor Rusty Jessup is a common-sense conservative running for the Alabama legislature. Rusty Jessup will lead the fight to fix our state's infrastructure. He's tired of roads filled with potholes and bridges our school buses can't drive across. He knows you are, too. Good-paying jobs and quality schools go hand-in-hand. -hand. Rusty Jessup will fund our schools and work with state leaders to bring that next big employer to Etowah and St. Clair County. Rusty Jessup is a lifelong conservative. He's the right choice for Republicans on June 5th. We're back here at Mumford Football Stadium. Long pass to Britt from Britt to LJ Flint goes incomplete. Just out the outreach hands of Flint. I saw you getting excited over there, yeah, Jason. So yeah. I knew you looked down and I saw a red <laughs> white flash going down the field. So uh, something big was happening. That was almost a touchdown. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Just off his fingertips. Great play call by Coach LeBeau. Our offensive coordinator come off the uh, change of Oh, downs there and uh, just missed the long ball there to Flint. Single back in the backfield. Here's a snap. Tuck, rather. Tuck was in at quarterback. Here's a pass. Oh, my goodness. Number one, Cody Eads just laid out uh, the month for the receiver. Yes. But it was the first down, though. Yeah, hats off to L.J. Flint for holding on to that ball. King Flint with a nice reception there. Good pop there by the Pell City Panther. Woo. And Tuck put the ball on the money. There's Flint. L.J. goes up. And, and wow. There's Eads. You know, at the next level, that Ooh. might be might be something there, but not in high school yet. Mm. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Here's Tuck rolling back. Got time. He's going to have to get rid of it, and he'll run up the middle, and he's brought down. No gain on the play. Jared Posey there, number 17, the junior of the tackle. Second down and about nine to go. Mercy. Let me tell you what something. Hit. L.J. Flint showed me something there. Now, I've known L.J. for a couple years, and – Last year, I don't know if he would make that catch. Ben is senior coming into this this game here and for this upcoming season, he knew he had to step his game up, and that showed me something there. A lot of grit, 
to to hold on to that ball and take that hit. Well, let's show me more grit. He does it again and catches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Tuck. The handoff to Swinford. Swinford trying to go around the left side and fighting for extra yards oh and losing gosh. yards there. Number one, number 28 and 34 there. Eads, of course, leading the way. The senior that made that uh, nice hit on Flint just a few minutes ago. They're just uh, really rushing to the football, Jason, and that's what you want to see from Pell City. Yeah. Uh, you got to be excited if you're a Pell City fan. They are. They're, they're defensive, really flying to the ball. They are. They, they, we they, know Mumford. You know yeah, Mumford. Right. They can move the football. That's some. Them are some athletes out there. Yep. This is some heads-up hey, football. Is a, a very competitive spring game uh, for, for the only play – Practicing for two weeks. These guys, from both teams, are getting after it. Dropping back. Here's Tuck. Got time looking to throw downfield. And overshoots his receiver there. Intended for number two, Zay Britt. So, Tuck and Britt rotating in and out at quarterback. And number two, Brett, Bryant Freeman from Pell City was also down there. But uh, it was no catch for either anybody. So, uh, Tuck, once he gets settled in at quarterback still, might be the guy that the Lions go to majority of the time at quarterback. They need Britt to get the ball in his hands in the open field. He's their playmaker, freshman All-American, sophomore All-American, uh, scored, I think, over 30 touchdowns last year. So they got to get the ball in his hands. And if Tuck can produce at quarterback, this will really help this team. Here's Tuck now on fourth and nine. Pass thrown out. It's complete for first down, and that's King Flint. Right there again for the first down. Nice job there. Tuck finding his man and coming down for the pass. You watch it here on the instant replay. There he is, and Flint goes up. Now you can brag on Flint. He saw yes. that coming. He didn't care if he was going to get planted again. Going right. up the base. That's right. where you see a good receiver because he, yes. he took that big, vicious hit while ago. And they come back and made a good first down that's play. It. That's, that's a good job. Good throw there by Tuck as well. The young quarterback, Good. five minutes, 10 seconds to go. Here's Tuck, now Sistrunk beside him. The give to Sistrunk, going around that right side, picking up some yards. Close to the first down, will they give it to him? The trunk going through the line there. Nice gain. Right there at the first down marker. I think they're going to mark him about a half, a yard short, inches short of the first down. You got to talk about number 70, McClendon, yes. opening up that yes. hole there, Jason. Uh, you can't get it done without that offensive line, and uh, he opened up a big old hole. Really was challenged by Coach Daryl Smith this week at practice. Missed that one practice and came back and really challenged him to, to practice harder than he has, and now he's playing a great game here. Here's Tuck on the move, going around left side, and he has to get Ooh. out of bounds, and he's hit right there at the sideline marker. Cody. Able to take a hit there. Cody Eads going. again knocking yes. him out of bounds. Man, there's some vicious hits going on in this game. <laughs> Cody Eads just all over the place. I tell you, these, these Panthers are really packing a punch, and the lines are bouncing right up. Wow. This is some tough football. As you see, Keller Williams, Sandra Lackey, if you're looking to buy or sell a home, make sure you call Sandra Lackey there with Keller Williams. I got her on speed dial. She's a very good agent. One of the best. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Here's Tuck to give to Sistrunk. Going to the left, fighting for yardage. Maybe got a yard there. I don't know who to call out. We got 34, 56, and uh, coming off the bottom, slowly but surely. Looks like number 82. But what a great play by Montford there, picking up a few yards. These are tough yards, not just yards, but tough yards against this Pell City defense. If you don't have the FNN app on your phone, I don't know, you, you're either 90 years old or I don't know what you've been doing, but you need to get the FNN app, especially before next football season. We're going to take a quick break here on the spring football series. Be right back here shortly. Attorney General may be the job title, but protecting Alabama's families, keeping our neighborhoods and our children safe, that's always been my job, my mission. That's who I am. I've worked with law enforcement and stood with the victims of crime. And instead of just talking about it, I've actually convicted the corrupt. And I've gone to countless parole hearings to keep violent criminals behind bars. Nobody's got more experience, and no one's better prepared to be Alabama's Attorney General. I'm Craig Lipscomb, and I was raised right here in District 30. Angela and I are raising our children here with the same conservative Christian values that we were raised with. 
I love this area, but we have a lot that we can improve on. Our roads and bridges need real work. I want to go to Montgomery to advocate for better infrastructure. I want to recruit companies with high paying jobs to Etowah and St. Clair counties. I want to help keep this the kind of place where our children will want to come back to raise their children. I'm Craig Lipscomb, and I'm asking for your vote for the Alabama House of Representatives on June 5th. We're back here in Mumford football field, Pell City leading seven to nothing. Lines moving. They're at the 30, second and eight. Here's Tuck dropping back at quarterback. Looking to throw, throwing deep to the right side. The end zone, nobody's there. A little miscommunication there as a receiver stopped after about a 10-yard route. And Tuck thought he was going all the way. Dangerous throw because you had a Pell City uh, back back there in the corner of the end zone. He was the only one around it. Yeah. But, you know, this spring, that's the little things you got to work on to get your assignments. You know, you only got a couple of weeks to get ready for this I'm game. I'm telling you, and, and it's, you know, they've been rotating Tuck and Britt back at quarterback. So, But to uh, see this level of football, Jason, with just that yeah, couple, about two you, weeks of practice, this is unbelievable. And hats off to the coaches' staff of Pell City and Mumford of, you know, getting these guys ready to be where they're at. Because, like I said, you know, we talked about earlier, both teams were placing seniors from last year. So a lot of uh, inexperienced guys playing right now. Here's Tuck, a quarterback. Got enough for the first down. Nice running there by Jay Tuck as he gets all the way down. We'll see where they mark it. It's close to the goal line there. Jay Tuck, good call there by Coach Abo, an offense coordinator. Let's look at it here on the instant replay. There's Tuck. He baked the handoff and just hit the outside. Number 45 for Pell City. <laughs> Arius Wisley got the, the moves put on him, and Tuck yes. takes the corner of the end zone and finally gets drug out. Looks like the ball's on about the 10-yard line. Sticks Tuck. are down, so exactly 10 yards to go. Tuck will check out after that long run. Zay Britt will come in at quarterback. First and 10 from the – where they got it? At the 10-yard line. At the 10. Right at the 10. The sticks are on the ground, so they got four plays to get in the end zone. Got Sistrunk in the backfield alongside Britt. Britt's going to keep it. Rolls to the left. Got enough for the <laughs> touchdown. Zay Britt and the Lions. Zay Britt weaving his way through traffic and getting in for the score. Great call. Good blocking up front by the Lions. Let's look at it here on the instant replay. You'll notice number 77, Carson McGuire there, opening up a nice hole for Brett. It was a quarterback sneak all the way. Sees the opening there. Just keeps his feet driving and goes in the end zone. Great blocking by the Lions. That's a jumbo package they bring Burnell Mitchell in to help block. And now the Lions will go for the extra point. Zay Britt with a hold. Jacoby three with the snap, and now Lawson Molden with the kick. The kick is up, and the kick is good, and the Lions will tie things up. 7-7, 3.25 to go on the spring football series here on FNN, the Friday Night Network. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even mermuts. And we covered it February 3rd, 2016. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. We're back here at Mumford Football Stadium. 325 to go. Pell City will take over on offense. We'll have the ball at the 30-yard line. Gossett and company got a single receiver to the left, two to the right, and Garrett in the backfield lined up behind Gossett. Pell City looking to answer here after Mumford score. Here's Garrett, and he's corralled there as he tries to go around right in. Toyer coming up, Lance Smith, Sistrunk, and Rodney Gross coming in as well, making the stops. Garrett had nowhere to go, actually lost about a half yard on the play, so second down and about, oh, about 11 to go there, Jason. you got to be happy if you're a, you're a Mumford Lions fan to see this enthusiasm by this Mumford Lion defense. It looks like the momentum has switched in their favor. That was a strong point coming into this game was the defense, and they've looked like they've settled down a little bit and, and uh, really have been attacking the ball here as of late. Here's Gossip, backs to both sides and give to number 34. He plays both ways for the Panthers. 
24, rather. Ethan Bynum, they're the junior, picking up about a couple on the play, so we'll call it third down and about, oh, six to go. 2.33 to go in this final quarter of varsity play here, and then we'll have one JV quarter between Pell City and Mumford. Football just keeps rolling on. It does, it does. It never stops. They say it's not a year-round sport. These guys train year-round for Friday nights. Here's Gossip looking, pass, broken up, incomplete. Ethan Swinford, Pernell Mitchell, all in on the coverage as well as Sistrunk. Great job by the Lions secondary and E-Train Swinford. Yeah, Gossip trying to hit, o, hit O'Neal right there in the flat and nowhere to go. Great job by Mumford just covering him up. Looks like they're going to elect to punt. All right, it'll be two minutes to go once they get started back. Well, the clock, the, the uh, game clock is running now. I thought they would stop it, and now they do finally stop the clock. So the Mumford line offense will come out. Peyton Graben at center, Carson McGuire, Jacoby Threet. McClendon, and also number 58, Logan Turner, all that offensive line group coming out, coached by Coach Daryl Smith. You got two receivers out to the right, two to the left. Sistrunk in the backfield for the Lions. While they bobbling the ball around, who's our sponsor this quarter? Big Daddy's Barbecue. I'll tell you what, I'm about to get hungry. And <laughs> so I, I know I where I'm headed after the game. Out there. <laughs> I want to ask for your monster burger. Big dog burger. Big dog. Jay Tuck rolling back. Got time to throw. Unloads. Alicia's and is it going to be picked off? Yes, it is. Number one for Pell City picks it off. Cody Got Eads. green room grass in front of him. Goes around the sideline. Still running. Still going. Crosses a 20. And Pell City's in business. Cody Eads with the interception. Yeah. Tuck put that one up for grabs and. He came across. Cody has had a big game. Yes, he's he had has. several big is. hits and now a big interception there for the Panthers. Is. After the interception, uh, Cody Eads, uh, to showing his athleticism, you after them big hits, you really don't want to see him with the football because he can do just as much damage running it as he can tackling it. Shout out to Carson McGuire there hustling down the field, the big offensive lineman making a stop on the play after the interception. Live by the pass, die by the yeah. pass. Yeah, yeah. But you know it's a tie ball game. It's spring. Two minutes left. Good play call. Right. You know, why not? Right. Let your playmakers make plays. All right. Now the defense for the Lions is going to have to step up here because Pell City knocking on the door and uh, put the pressure back on Mumford. And Pell City probably going to try to use up some clock if they can as well. Here's Gossip to give to Garrett. And he picks up about four, maybe five yards before he's brought down. Nice run by Garrett, number 22. Uh, Darius Garrett, the senior, the captain, and picking up some hard yardage. He's, he's been the workhorse all night and uh, picks up about six yards. Six, we'll call it maybe, yeah, long six yards there. Second down and about four to go. Peyton Graben will check out. Jacoby Three will check in for the Lions. Under a minute to go now. Ball will be placed at the 13-yard line. Here's Gossett. Give to Garrett, trying to go around that left side, and he's brought down quickly. Picked up a few more yards, Garrett did. Drake only Dorman, much. I think, on the stop there. He only got about a half yard on that, so third down and a long three. Timeout will be called by Pell City. We'll take one as well. Be back shortly here on the Spring Football Series here on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds, and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln, for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving.
Bell City knocking on the door here as, on third downs. Third and three for the Panthers as they got a couple yards there. Still going to be short of that first down. Nope, they picked they it up. They did get it. Yeah, Garrett. Got enough for it. That was big run there by Garrett. Yeah, Garrett picked it up. Some hard running. First down and goal, Pell City. Time out, Mumford. That stops the clock at 31.6 seconds. We'll take a stop and break as well. Be back here on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Banking local matters. When you keep your money here, it stays in the community to support local businesses and schools and farms. At First Bank of Alabama, we've been serving this area for more than 160 years. We care about our community and the people who live here. So when you bank here, you make being here better for all of us. First Bank of Alabama, the official bank of here. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Back here at Mumford Football Field for the Pell City Mumford Lions matchup. And we're down to 31.6 seconds. Score is all tied up. Pell City's got four downs to get in the end zone. They're at the three-yard line. Can the Mumford Lion defense hold tight, hold, keep them out of the end zone? They could. That is the question. Different set here as... Oh, I formation as Gossett will go under center. Here's Gossett to give to Garrett. He'll plow forward. And Not much. Short of the first down. Well, he's got the first down. It's going to be second or, down. Yeah, a, short of the goal line, rather. About I'm a, sorry. About a yard to go there, Jason. A yard to go. Pernell Mitchell, the hit man, on the stop, and the clock's going to keep running. Under 10 seconds now, Pell City is not going to get the playoff, and that's how we'll finish the varsity segment. Well, oh, they called the timeout. Timeout with 1.4 seconds. So Pell City will have one more play to go when we come back after break here on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Big Daddy's Barbecue on Highway 21 is where Munford comes to eat. You'll always find delicious home cooking daily with fast, friendly service. Big Daddy's offers plates or sandwiches with all your favorite sides to choose from, specializing in wings, burgers, chicken, ribs, and barbecue. Open early, open late, six days a week. Come in with family or friends or call ahead and take it home. 256-358-9005. Big Daddy's Barbecue, proud supporters of the Munford Lions. Back here at Munford Football Field, Jason Palman, Brandon Steele, 1.4 seconds to go, Pill. City calls a timeout down at the two-yard line. We was, we was just talking down. about why Pell City mommy didn't take a couple more snaps there to get in the yeah. end zone. But, you know, this is a spring football game, good sportsmanship on both sides. You know, they're going to do one more play, and, you know, they've seen what they want to see out of their starters, and uh, they're going to elect to look like they might kick a field goal here or something to try to yeah. get a win. I was going to see if they would uh, – um, take a knee, but it looks like Pell City is going to try for the field goal. Here's a snap. The kick. It's up. It's good. And it's good. So Pell City will take the lead and I guess take the win, you could call it. With 10 to 7 with the two varsity quarters over with. And the JV will come up next. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll have the JV edition here on the Spring Football Series on FNN, the Friday Night Network. Mayor Rusty Jessup is a common sense conservative running for the Alabama legislature. Rusty Jessup will lead the fight to fix our state's infrastructure. He's tired of roads filled with potholes and bridges our school buses can't drive across. He knows you are too. Good paying jobs and quality schools go hand in hand. Rusty Jessup will fund our schools and work with state leaders to bring that next big employer to Etowah and St. Clair County. Rusty Jessup is a lifelong conservative. He's the right choice for Republicans on June 5th. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds 
And you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln, for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. We're back here at Mumford Football Field now for the JV version here of Pell City and the Lions of Mumford. What you think about it, Jabari? Well, I saw some good things and I saw some things we need to work on. And that's why you play these spring games. Some teams elect not to play, but we've got plenty of film to, to uh, look at and to ponder over this uh, for the next couple months before they start practice. So, Got some things to work on, but overall, I'm, I'm encouraged. Here's a gift from Morgan to Corbin Smith, and he'll be run out of bounds about the 32-yard line, pick up about two on the play. So this will be the JV team. Parker Molden out there on that offensive line, Colton Palm in the center, and uh, you got uh, Trayvon McClendon out there, Drew Harkins. I mentioned Connor Morgan, that quarterback, and we'll try to get a couple of these other guys called out. There's uh, Caleb Cotton in there as well. Let's see, number 75, that's Jackson Dunaway. Also, Kyler Gibson. Carson Tyree, that wide receiver. Here's the snap to give to Smith, and he's brought down in a hurry there. Good pursuit and play on their uh, Panthers. Yeah, a lot of ninth graders out there on the field now. There's also Jaquan Anderson on that far side of receiver. T.D. Parker out there. Here's a quick pass. Drew Harkins passes complete from Morgan to Harkins, and he'll pick up a couple yards, and it'll bring up fourth down for the Lions. No. It is. Pell City's offense will come out on the field. The Lions defense will come out for the first time for the JV. We'll see who in at quarterback for Pell City. Looks like number five for the Panthers. I say number five. It may have been four. Here's the give to the big running back there, and he's brought down. Man, was he a load to bring down. That's number 61 bringing him down there, making Griffin. Number 10, or no, that was number 32 on the carry, the big back for the Panthers. Uh, two receivers to the right, single to the left, another high snap, give. Number 24, and he'll go around the right side, brought down by a couple of the Panthers. And now we got our high school fo football game of the week, season opener. Wow, what a big one that's going to be. Alexandria Valley Cubs and the Talladega Tigers. Alexandria with the new coach, Todd Ginn, and Talladega Tigers on the second-year coach, uh, Ted Darby. So, it'll be, yes, it'll be a good good game down there at Mary Dumas. I know uh, producer Jim likes to go to Mary Dumas. And it's a historic football field and uh, Talladega's team community getting back into the football swing of things, and it ought to be a great ap atmosphere for a first-round game. Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard, yeah, we're, yeah, it's going to be a big one, yeah, and big, big one in this area, we'll just see if that all plays out, hopefully it does. 
Two receivers right, single to left. Here's a give to the back in the backfield going up the middle. And he's got some running room, and he'll pick up about five, six yards. Still a couple yards shy of the first down. I'd like to mention our quarter sponsor, probate judge candidate Jackie Swinford. The, uh, make sure you come out and vote on June 5th for Jackie Swinford pro, for probate judge. Talked about earlier how he's really how, helped out Talladega County as a county commissioner and now running for probate judge. Great man. Does a lot for the communities around here. And you won't find a, a better guy than Jackie Swinford. Here's the give. Enough for the first down for the Panthers. And that'll stop the clock at 5.57 to go in our last quarter of play. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, what you know, our forefathers has, has, has paved the way for us and worked hard for us to get uh, the right to vote. And you ought to take advantage of that and go, uh, go vote every chance you get. High snap. Give up the middle. Got some running room. Plowing ahead and being brought down. Still going enough for the first down. Number 23. Yep, 23. Peyton Gaither making Griffin on the stop for the Lions. Here's a snap to give. Once again, and they'll go around left end. Got some running room. Gets down to about the 10 to 5 and brought down by Garrett Foshi. <laughs> they are. A lot of them came from the junior high on both sides and now stepping up to the JV and and uh, you see, they 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 got a lot of growing to do, and they'll they'll get bigger and stronger during the summer. And both teams going hard at it. Here's a high snap once again. Quarterback able to corral it. Has off to 23, and runs into a, about six lines there at the line of scrimmage. Madden Smith, Terrence Reynolds, Peyton Gaither all in on the stop. Just snap to give up the middle. He's brought down. Nice play there by the Lions. Sixty-one, making Griffin on the stop for the Lions. Four twenty-seven to go here in the quarter. The Panthers knocking on the door of the Lions at down at the five-yard line. Bring up third court, third down, and yes, it is. Will be our last quarter, last quarter of the spring football series. And man, it's been a good one. A lot of good games. Here's the snap, give. And will he get enough to get in there in the end zone? Yes, he does as he plows his way forward for the score. what the Panthers elect to do. I imagine they will go for two here as they get to play in from the sidelines. And yes, they do. They'll go for two. Single back in the backfield. Two receivers to the right and left. Pell City here with the opportunity to get another two points. Rolling out to his right. Got heavy pressure. Coming back to the left and now throws it in the end zone. It's up for grabs, and does he come down with the catch? Yes, he does. Number 26, basically a Hail Mary pass. He just threw it, a, threw it up into a wad, and he came down with it. Rolling, 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 rolling. Uh, cuts it back. Whoop, go throw it in the end zone. And Dylan Thomas 
there, bounces around with about six Mumford defenders there. Look at it right there. Great job by our camera crew. You won't see anything better than that. They come down with it. Well, the two points. What do you think about that, Jay? That was a uh, good catch, good concentration there by 26 as he saw it all the way. And he's the one that wanted it out of that mass of bodies there in the end zone. He came down with it. Yeah, that's right. Got Earl Stevens and Cor Corky Stevens making her way down the steps here. Good supporters of the Mumford Lion football. Here's the Lions now. They'll take over on offense on the 30. And there's a flag on the play as an offsides here. I think it's a call. The offsides on the defense. Still first down. Here's Morgan, dropping back. Finds Corbin Smith out in the flat. Corbin making a man miss, now another one, and picks up enough for the first down and then some, down to about the 46 yard line. Corbin Smith with a great run after the catch. Three forty-five to go, and here's Morgan. Back in the gun once again. Quick out pass to Anthony Stevens, and Stevens still going. Where do they will it mark him out? They'll mark him out right at the fifty-yard line. Morgan's pass, complete. Number thirty-eight. Yes. Eli Carissero in at receiver for the Lions. Single back in the backfield. Smith, now here's a snap. Fake give to him. Connor rolling out, finds the receiver out in the flat. Passes Cotton. Oh, as he stood up there. Wow. Pass was complete to eight. 82, that's Jay Quan Anderson. Jay. I'll bring up third and four from the 48. Two receivers are right and left. Here's Morgan. Hand off, Smith. And got enough for the first down, so the clock will stop at 2.42. Smith found a hole and was able to dive forward for the first down. We have first and 10 from the 43. Yes, we do. I'm telling you. It, it, and this is just a teaser. I'm telling you, now we got to wait a couple months. No, it'll be here before we know it. Give to Smith, going around the left side and still going, scrapping, scrapping, fighting forward for yardage. Great job by Corbin Smith, and that's why we call him Scrappy. Making something out of nothing. And, and I don't know if you remember Carson Smith from last year, the running back from, from Mumford, the little guy. Smallest guy on the field. But you won't find a tougher runner than Carson Smith and Scrappy, his younger brother, Corbin. Yes, and then they had another one, Cor uh, Calvin. He's in the military right now, but he was a good running back for the Lions back, uh, I guess it's been maybe four or five years ago. And they all took after their daddy, Randy Smith. He was another running back here at Oxford. Back, he graduated in 82. So there's a little bit of running back history from the Lions. Here's Morgan dropping back to pass. Looking downfield to the left side. I got a man over there. Is it caught? No sign yet. Nobody knows, but yes, they're going to catch it. The choir got definitely quiet because nobody knew who caught it. And that's T.D. Parker. Wow, what a catch. My goodness. I, I couldn't even see with the binoculars. 
Remember that name, T.D. Parker, because I guarantee you we're going to be calling out a lot over the years. He caught one against that Montevallo game. That was a tremendous catch. Went up and got it. And now another good catch there. Morgan laid it up there for him to go get it. Here's Morgan. Scramming quarterback keeper. Is he going to get in? Met at the goal line. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Connor Morgan with the run. Teammates helping him up there. Oh, he took a shot, too, and got up and took it. He's fine. Heading off the field. Great play call. Fake there, and, and Morgan rolls out, saw an opening, and just went with it. Tucked it down, took a shot. It got across the goal line there, as you see. There. Hey, I think the other guy is hurting. Took the brunt of it. Oh my gosh, good Here's the snap. Morgan looking the end zone. Flag down on the play. I think we may have had a false start. We do. False start on the offense. So the Lions will be backed up a little bit and they'll get a chance to run another play. Yeah, yeah, uh, Connor took the took the hit strong. <laughs> you have to watch the replay. Yep, you can go to YouTube and. There it is. There it is. Here's a, another angle from it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 85 one bouncing backward. Like, Woo. Here we go. Here's Connor rolling back on a two point conversion. Flips it out to Corbin Smith. Corbin's got some runner room in front of him. Gets in there for the score. Touchdown. Two point conversion successful for the Lions. Corbin Smith around right side was able to get by a couple of defenders and get in there for the score. Well, it, it, it able for them, if they, it holds true, to leave out on a good note here today. Yes. The Panthers will have one more chance here on offense with a minute to go. The ball will be at the 30-yard line. We'll see what they do here on offense. High snap once again to give to number 21. Going around the right side, plugging, chugging for yardage. He'll pick up close to five yards, I think, Brandon, depending on where the stop is or where they mark him. Fifty-one seconds to go. And just watch a bunch of FNN replays. Yeah, I heard that. Second and five from the 35, 51 seconds to go. Here's Pell City. Backs to both sides. There's a snap, a flag on the play. Probably a false start. Yeah, false start against the offense. So I'll back them up five yards. <laughs> just, just got a report that the one of the receivers was basically in the secondary of Mumford's there on that play. He was way offside. Here we go. Pell City will try it again. Second and ten. High snap. And the ball's loose. It's on the ground. Will Mumford recover? It's still loose. We'll see who comes out of it. Are they with it? 
and Mumford does recover with 39 seconds to go. Holland there, the Thompson, and coming up with his old Landry Primetime Bradford coming up with that loose ball. He's a ball hawk, I tell you. Really came into his own last year and linebacker for the junior high team. And he's going to be a guy you're going to hear his name called out on Friday nights a lot as well. As the Lions offense comes out on the field, 39 seconds to go. Can they get in for another score? Here's Morgan back in at quarterback. Dropping back, looking to throw. Floats one in the end zone. It's up for grabs. Should have been picked off by Pell City, but they couldn't come down with it. Intended for either Anthony Stevens. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So the Lions will get another opportunity with second and 10 from the 10, 33 seconds to go. Big Daddy's Barbecue open after the game or any time you'd like during the week. Make sure you go by there and get all your food that you want. Also entertainment, cold beverages. Here's a snap back to Morgan. Got to get rid of it, and he does. Ball behind, behind the line of scrimmage. Corbin's got to pick it up. Why as he does, but he's going to lose all kinds of ground there. Kind of a bad snap there, but here's six seconds up back on the clock. Connor's going to have one more shot. Goes for the end zone. Ball's up for grabs, and it'll be knocked down on the play. No flag on the play, I don't think, and that's how we'll end. But uh, hats off to both these teams fighting to the last second, to the bitter end. And, man, I tell you what, Brandon, what a, a day of football. Three great games with – Montevallo, we didn't know what they had coming in, but they came in and really played well. Pell City came in and battled as well, both the varsity and the junior varsity under first-year coach Wayne Lee. And then, of course, Mumford, the homestanding team, replacing a lot of guys from last year. And we're going to take a break here on FNN, the spring football series, and we'll come back and we'll wrap it up here shortly. Attorney General may be the job title, but protecting Alabama's families, keeping our neighborhoods and our children safe, that's always been my job, my mission. That's who I am. I've worked with law enforcement and stood with the victims of crime. And instead of just talking about it, I've actually convicted the corrupt. And I've gone to countless parole hearings to keep violent criminals behind bars. Nobody's got more experience and no one's better prepared to be Alabama's Attorney General. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even mermuts. And we covered it February 3rd, 2016. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. at Mumford football field, wrapping things up here between Mumford and Pell City. We'd like to welcome you back this fall to tune in to FNN, the Friday Night Network. Make sure you get the FNN app on your phone, and that way you can follow along the FNN Friday Night High School Game of the Week. What well, turns this fall on Thursday and Friday night, doubleheader, August 23rd and 24th. We did see who's going to be uh, one of those matchups there. Alexandria and Talladega yes. down at Talladega. Alexandria with the new coach, Talladega with some momentum coming from last year. Uh, and uh, look forward to uh, bringing you that action in the fall. We thank you for watching tonight. Good night and have a good summer. <laughs>